Hello once again guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day so far. So in this video today, we are going to be talking about three stocks that I would consider owning for the rest of my life. And each of these three stocks we're going to discuss today are stocks that I either currently own right now or I owned at one point in time. Now, a lot of people don't realize this, but most successful investors out there are actually long-term investors. It's often not the people who are buying and selling stocks on a consistent and frequent basis. It's the people who buy stocks and then simply hold on to them and allow them to trend upward. Now, the perfect example of this, of a long-term investor, is actually Warren Buffett, somebody that most of us are familiar with. In fact, there are many stocks that Warren Buffett owns that he has been buying shares of, not just for years, but actually for decades in some cases. For example, Warren Buffett has been buying American Express stock since 1964. That is when he started buying that stock, meaning he has owned it for over 50 years. So maybe that's a little bit extreme here using that as an example. But these are three stocks that, in my opinion, I would be comfortable with holding for the next couple of decades. And the one other thing I want to say, I'm sure this goes without saying, guys, but obviously you have to do your own due diligence when looking at stocks and investments. I'm not telling you to run out there and buy these stocks. I'm just saying these are stocks that I would be comfortable owning for the rest of my life. And the other thing I want to mention as well, when it comes down to actually buying these stocks, uh, pretty much all three of these stocks are trading at or near all-time highs right now. And I don't ever recommend buying stocks at all-time highs. So if you were actually looking to buy these stocks after doing your own research and due diligence on them, I would personally say wait until they go on sale and try not to buy stocks at all-time highs. All right, guys, so coming in at number one on my list here in no particular order is none other than Amazon stock. Now, this is a stock I've been talking about on my channel here since back in 2017. I did a video sharing my thoughts and opinions on Amazon stock and whether I thought this was a stock to buy at the current prices. Now, at that point in time, Amazon stock was trading for just $898 per share. And it's honestly crazy to think back to a time before Amazon stock was trading over $1,000 per share. Now in that video, I did say that Amazon stock was a buy, and that was right around the point when I bought my first Amazon shares back then, um, at a price of around $9.50 per share when I initially invested in Amazon. Now as I'm sure you guys can imagine, that stock has done exceptionally well over the last two years. Uh, it is now trading at $1,816 per share, which is a 102% return since I mentioned it for the first time on this channel about two years ago. Now, the reason why Amazon is doing so well right now goes a lot further than just them having a slight competitive advantage or anything like that. The reason why Amazon is doing so well is because of a change in the consumer shopping habits. And we've been seeing this happen over the last couple of years. Very simply, people are just not interested in buying stuff in stores anymore, and they are doing more and more shopping online. I'm actually recording this on Black Friday, and it's crazy because I was out to the stores earlier today, and I, I even noticed that there's less people, even on Black Friday, that are out doing shopping because they would rather do their shopping on Cyber Monday or just rely on the online options to do their shopping. And so that is why I'm comfortable with having Amazon on my list of stocks to own for life or stock you would never sell because that trend of people looking to do more shopping online isn't going to change anytime soon. In fact, it's just going to get bigger and bigger as that whole stay at home culture becomes more popular. Now, as far as purchasing this stock, Amazon is one of those stocks out there that rarely goes on sale. Um, oftentimes, it's either just kind of staying in one place at one time where it's not really moving anywhere, or it's just going up like a rocket. Uh, but there was a sale on Amazon stock recently, if you were paying attention, and that was back in December of 2018, just about one year ago. So in December of 2018, Amazon stock fell to 1307 per share, which would have been an optimal entry point for this stock if you were looking to pick it up on a dip, as it is now trading at around $1,800 per share. 
Now there's a lot to actually love about Amazon too beyond just the e-commerce business. A lot of people look at Amazon and they think this is just a company that delivers packages and offers e-commerce solutions, but they actually do a lot above and beyond that. One of the biggest things being cloud computing through Amazon Web Services, which is kind of a, a weird business that most people who don't understand Amazon have no idea that they're actually involved with. But Amazon is actually one of the world's largest providers of cloud computing services out there. They're also investing billions of dollars into original video content for Amazon Prime Video to compete with other streaming services out there. And for those of you who are not familiar, just so you know, Jack Ryan season number two is officially out. Uh, that is one of my favorite shows. I've been binge watching that. Uh, but that just goes to show you the amount of money and the type of quality content they are looking to provide and willing to provide for Amazon Video just to compete with Netflix and the other streaming options out there. So in my opinion, when you buy Amazon stock, it's almost like you get this miniature Netflix built right in. So if you're bullish on streaming and you believe that's going to be the way people are consuming media in the future, well, you get that built right in. So not only are you getting this massive e-commerce giant, you're also getting this massive cloud computing company as well as this streaming company and a little piece of all these other businesses that Amazon is involved with. Now, the one thing you do have to understand as an Amazon shareholder is that Amazon is not a company that's focused on profits. They're not looking to make as much money as possible or even to be as profitable as possible. Their number one goal is to grow as fast as possible and dominate all the markets they're involved with. So as a result, this is not the most profitable company out there. And so if you look at the company on a fundamental basis and you look at the price to earnings ratio, you'll always see this company trading at a high PE ratio because they just don't care about profitability right now. They're looking to grow as fast and as much as possible. Now, if you're comfortable with this business model, Amazon is the type of stock that could reward you for years to come as an investor. But a lot of people out there are just solely interested in investing in very profitable companies. Um, and you're just not going to see that with Amazon. They don't pay a dividend. I doubt that they ever will. They would just prefer to reinvest those earnings back into their different businesses and they're looking to operate in a way that they're growing as fast as possible and dominating these different markets as opposed to trying to be as profitable as possible as a company. And it's honestly crazy to think about how far Amazon has come from 1994 being just a small online bookseller to being the world's largest e-commerce company investing more money into original video content than massive companies like HBO, for example. But the most shocking statistic for me uh, was this one right here that came from eMarketer. Amazon is expected to capture 50% of all US online sales in 2019. The fact that just one company is capturing a 50%, half of all of the online sales, honestly blows my mind. And if that's not a reason to be invested in Amazon, I don't know what the reason is. But if you believe that this trend of online shopping is going to continue, there's really no better stock out there, in my opinion, to own than the one and only Amazon stock. All right, guys, now before I get into number two here, I wanna go ahead and mention a free stock promotion that is being run right now by Webull. So if you guys are not familiar, Webull is a completely free, commission-free, fee-free trading app out there, and they are offering not one, but two free stocks right now for those who actually sign up and open up an account with this brokerage. So it's honestly as simple as clicking the link down in the description below and then signing up for an account with them and you're going to get not one but two completely free stocks just for signing up. The first stock is going to be when you open the account and that stock is going to be worth up to $250. And then when you actually fund the account, you're gonna get a second free stock, the second one being worth up to $1,000. So if you do the math on that guys, that's two completely free stocks worth up to $1,250 just for opening an account and funding the account, you'll be getting two completely free stocks. 
Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Webull, the best way I can describe this trading app is it's kind of like Robinhood if you took the basic features offered by Robinhood and then added additional research tools and features that a lot of investors are looking for. So it's kind of like a more advanced version of the free trading app Robinhood, offering you guys a lot of the bells and whistles and research tools that you're just not finding with that basic app. Uh, not to mention the two free stocks you get just for signing up. Now, if you guys do use my link, I do earn a commission in the process. So I just want to be transparent with you about that. Uh, but that is going to be the top link down in the description below. If you want to learn more about Webull and pick up those two completely free stocks. All right, guys, so stock number two on my list here of stocks to own for life is none other than Apple stock. And I'm sure it comes at no surprise because this is one of the most talked about stocks out there uh, in the investing community. Now, the first time I actually mentioned this stock here on my channel was back in April of 2017 in a video titled The Best Stocks for Beginners. And I still see this as a great stock out there for beginners to invest in. So back when I mentioned that stock, it was trading for $142 per share. And now Apple stock trades well over $260 per share just about two and a half years later, which is an 88% return. So obviously Apple has been a great stock to own and it's been rewarding investors for many, many years. Now I will say this, Apple stock is at all time highs right now. So if you're looking to start out a position in Apple stock, I would personally not recommend buying it at all time highs because it is a stock that does go on sale on occasion. Now the most recent example of this was actually pretty recently here in May. The stock fell to around 175 per share over trade war fears with China involving uh, the potential cost implications on the iPhone. Uh, we saw this stock come back to a price of 175 per share from about $210. So for those who were paying attention, looking for an optimal entry point for Apple stock, that was literally the perfect time to buy. Obviously guys, hindsight is 2020, but since May, we've seen this stock go from about 175 a share to above $260 per share. So if you're patient guys, you can pretty much buy any stock out there on sale. It's just a matter of being patient and waiting for the right time to buy. And I'm not always looking to buy at the perfect point where I'm getting it as cheap as possible. But what I try to do is I look at the stock, I see where it usually trades uh, as far as a price range. And if I can get it below that average price range, then I'm certainly happy. I'm not looking to buy at the exact bottom. Uh, but as a general rule of thumb, one that I always tend to follow is that anytime that Apple stock goes on sale, uh, that is a good time to buy Apple stock because it doesn't happen very often. Now, as far as reasons to own this stock, well, one of my favorites is the fact that this isn't just necessarily a growth investment. Uh, it's also an income investment because this is a dividend payer. So for people looking for both growth and income potential, uh, I see no better option out there than Apple. Uh, currently paying a dividend yield of 1.18%. So not only are they offering you stellar growth potential here with the company, uh, they're also paying you those quarterly dividends. And if you're looking to obviously maximize your returns, you can simply reinvest those dividends back into more Apple stock, allowing you to earn more dividends from your dividends um, and just accelerate the growth of that uh, you know, investment faster and faster. Now this is actually kind of an interesting transition period going on right now for Apple stock because their number one revenue driver here, the iPhone, uh, is actually slowing down right now in terms of the sales and the revenue. And that is simply because of the law of diminishing returns. Uh, the phones that they're producing today and, and releasing are honestly brilliant pieces of technology. And even phones that are a couple of years old are still phenomenal pieces of technology that still have a lot of use left in them. So the incentive to actually go out there and upgrade has become less and less each year because there's really only so much they can do with these phones. Now, I'm sure we will be seeing Apple with more revolutionary technology coming out in the future, but as it stands right now, 
uh, the incentive to upgrade to the iPhone 11 from the iPhone 10 uh, is just not there for most people. But the good news is despite the fact that iPhone numbers are stagnant and not really growing, we're seeing massive growth in a different segment of Apple being the services side of the business. So that is going to be where Apple is putting a lot of their focus on and that's going to be a massive revenue driver for this company moving forward. So for those who are not familiar, Apple services is anything ranging from the App Store to Apple Music or their iCloud subscriptions, Apple Pay, licensing deals and more. Uh, and it's basically anything that people are using and paying Apple for on a regular recurring basis. So maybe it's paying whatever it is, 99 cents per month for your iCloud subscription, or you're paying a set price per month for uh, you know, Apple Music, or every time you use Apple Pay, they're earning a small percentage as a transaction fee. It's all these small amounts of money but the beauty of the services business is that it's a recurring revenue model for them. So with the iPhone, for example, when you go out there and buy a new physical phone, yes, they're going to make a lot of money on that, but it's a one-time purchase. Whereas with these services, it's a recurring monthly subscription. So you pay for your iCloud every single month or you're paying for Apple Music every single month, uh, that becomes a predictable revenue stream for them. And beyond that, guys, the final reason I have for owning Apple is just the strength and value of the brand. Apple is the world's most recognizable brand out there, and they're known for exceptional quality, uh, and people just absolutely love this brand, myself included. So Apple is without a doubt on my list of companies that you could own for the rest of your life, and it's a company I will certainly be holding on to for a very long time. All right, guys, now third and finally, the last stock on my list here of stocks to own for life is Google stock. And uh, it was a tough decision here between Facebook and Google, but at the end of the day, if I had to pick between the two, I would go with Google. Now, the first time I mentioned this stock on my channel was actually back in May of 2017. And of the three stocks mentioned in this video, uh, this is the one that has underperformed in terms of uh, what the other two have done because uh, Amazon stock more than doubled. We saw that Apple stock has almost doubled since I mentioned it the first time. Uh, as far as Google stock goes, when I was talking about this stock and when I initially bought it, it was trading at around $950 per share, and it now trades at around $1,308 per share, which is a 38% return since May of 2017 when I mentioned it here on my channel and around the time that I had purchased some shares. Now, Google is no longer a stock that I currently own, but it's one that I will definitely be buying in the future uh, should there be a good buying opportunity. Now, the first thing I want to mention about Google stock is just to clear something up for you guys. A lot of people run into this when they're doing some research on this stock. They'll find that there are actually two different Google stocks out there. The first one is GOOG, and the second one is GOOGL, and they trade at slightly different share prices. Well, the reason behind that is because one of those classes of shares has voting rights, and the other class of shares has no voting rights. So if you're out there shopping around looking to buy some Google shares, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you buy the right class of shares based on whether or not you want to have shares with voting rights. And the reason behind that is because at one point in time, every Google shareholder got an additional share of Google that was a non-voting share. Um, and that is how you got the GOOG versus the GOOGL shares that are currently trading out there. So GOOG is the class of shares with no voting rights and then GOOGL is the class of shares that does have voting rights if you are interested. The first major sale we saw with Google stock was back in December of 2018, about one year ago, and that was around the same time we saw a sale taking place with Amazon stock as well. And at that point in time, uh, Google stock fell below $1,000 per share, down to 977 per share. And honestly, guys, it is very rare to see Amazon or Google stock below $1,000 per share. I don't think we'll ever see it happen again with Amazon, but if it does happen with Google, uh, it is most likely a good opportunity to buy some shares. And then the second time we saw a sale here was June of this year, earlier this year, the stock fell to 1,068 per share. 
Now, my reason for owning Google stock, aside from the fact that they pay me a lot of money as a YouTube creator, um, is the fact that I am very bullish on the digital advertising space. And if you are interested in investing in digital ads, uh, you know, or this whole industry as a whole, there's basically just two companies that control the ad space here. Uh, number one is Google, and number one is Facebook. And as I've said, I've owned both of these companies in the past. As far as Google goes here, obviously they own all of the different services that people are using every single day, like Google Maps and Gmail. They have the world's largest search engine. They also own YouTube and a lot of different companies out there. And they have so much control over the digital advertising space. So according to eMarketer, in 2019, Google is expected to capture 36.2% of all money spent on digital ads in the United States. And that statistic alone should just blow your mind. Over one third of all of the money spent on digital ads in the United States is going to go to Google in 2019. And that is just unbelievable that just one company has that much control over the digital advertising space. Now Facebook comes in at number two and they're expected to capture 19.2% of all of that spend. So between those two companies, between Google and Facebook, they are expected to capture 55.4% of all of the money spent on digital ads in the United States. Uh, so literally just two companies capturing more than half of all of the money. So if companies are out there dumping money into digital ads, the majority of that money is going to be going into the pockets of Facebook and Google. And the reason why I like this as a long-term investment is because these ad rates are just going to get higher as more and more companies adopt to using these digital ads. And I know a lot of people think this market is saturated, but there are still so many companies and businesses out there that are not getting with the trends that are just now realizing, hey, you know, we gotta get on social media, we gotta start running digital ads. And it honestly just comes down to supply and demand here. As more people are competing for the same amount of advertising space, well, the ad rates are just going to get higher and higher ad rates mean more money and more profitability for companies like Facebook and Google. So as we see more and more people adopting to the digital ads, we're just gonna see these companies making more and more money. And there's obviously, guys, a lot of other reasons to invest in Google stock outside of the digital ads. That's just my main reason for being bullish and for having this on my list of stocks I would own for life. But honestly, guys, you can't deny the fact that companies like Google and Facebook just have such a brilliant business model here where people like me and people like you create all the content for social media sites. I uh, think about Facebook, for example. The reason that people use Facebook is because of the content that other people are sharing. I make these YouTube videos, Google simply puts the ads on the videos and then we share the money. So it's this brilliant uh, you know, ecosystem they've created here where other people are creating the content, they're allowing you to monetize the platform and then they're making massive amounts of money. Uh, but anyways, guys, that is gonna wrap up this video. Those are three stocks that I would have on my list of stocks to own for life. I would love to hear what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you agree with these picks? Do you disagree? Uh, let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. And I hope to see you in the next video.